everyone, this is Tamara from ShelfNation.com and welcome to episode 30. Today I'm talking about Banned Books Week 2016. What is Banned Books Week, you ask? It is an annual event celebrating the freedom to read. It is usually held during the last week of September and it highlights the value of free and open access to information, basically meaning why you should be able to read what you want, despite what others have to say about it. Today I will be highlighting some of the challenged books of 2015. I will be talking about why it's important to read banned books and why you should be talking about banned books week along with me. First, I'll be giving you a little bit of history on banned books week. I found information on banned books week on bannedbooksweek.org, ala.org, ncac.org, and of course Wikipedia. And I will be linking all the links that I'm talking about in today's episode in the show notes. So feel free to read up on your own and form your own opinion of Banned Books Week. And if you'd like to get in on this conversation or give me some feedback on this topic, please tweet at me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. Okay, so let's get started. As I said, we're going to talk about a little bit of the history. It was founded in 1982 um, by predominant First Amendment library activist Judith Krug. Krug said that the Association of American Publishers contacted her with ideas on bringing banned books to the attention of the American public after a slew of books have been banned that year. So that is how these things started, according to Wikipedia, and uh, is sponsored by the ALA, which is the American Library Association. It is sponsored by American Booksellers Association, American Booksellers Foundation for Free Expression, American Society of Journalists and Authors, the Association of American Publishers, the National Association of College Stores, and endorsed by the Center for the Book in the Library of the Congress. So you're probably wondering what I'm meant by books recently challenged. And basically, these are books that were challenged by um, facilitators or people of power within schools, bookstores, and libraries. More than 11,000 books have been challenged since 1982, according to the ALA. And that's crazy. I mean, how dare you say someone can't read a book because you don't like the content. We are all individuals, but guess what? Everyone has the right to read what they want to read and make their own decisions. So let's talk about a few of the 10 most challenged titles for 2015. Number one was Looking for Alaska by John Green. And the reason was offensive language, sexually explicit, and unsuited for age group. This is a young adult title, and it's a very popular title. And I'm glad that many people have read this book despite it being challenged last year. Many of you may recognize John Green because he wrote the best-selling book, The Fault in Our Stars, and also that was a movie and everyone really just flocked to that book and the movie. He also has written An Abundance of Catherine's Paper Towns, which is also made into a movie, and of course, the book that was challenged, which is Looking for Alaska. Now, I don't know about you, but if you've read a young adult book in the last, I don't know, five years or so, maybe even 10 years or so, lots of them have offensive language, sexually explicit situations, and most of them probably are unsuited for the age group, but who cares, right? We all were reading things or seeing things we probably shouldn't have been seeing. Who cares? Let the parents decide what they their kids should be reading and not the libraries or schools or bookstores or whatever. Yeah, I haven't read Looking for Alaska, but that's not because it's on this list. I just haven't read it. I've read other things by John Green and everyone loved this book. So I say if you're interested in that, go for it. The second book on the list is Fifty Shades of Grey, and that's not at all entirely surprising. The reason is stated as sexually explicit, unsuited to age group, and other, in parentheses, poorly written concerns that the group of teenagers will want to try it. Okay, well, guess what? After reading Fifty Shades, most adults didn't want to try it. So, I mean, seriously, slow your roll right now. And again, same reason. So what? There is explicit 
sexual situations in there and it is not suited to children, but I don't think that's a reason to ban it. I mean, honestly, parents, I mean, people have to take responsibility for themselves. I strongly feel this way. I know when I was young, I was reading V.C. Andrews and probably some other things I probably shouldn't have been reading, but guess what? I turned out just fine. And I don't care. I read it anyway. And I don't think those were banned. I think I saw V.C. Andrews books in the school library. And guess what? Those had, I don't know, incest and other things in it. So please give me a break. Leave these books alone. Also, I noticed on here, the Holy Bible is number six. And the reason is religious viewpoint. Okay. The Holy Bible. Seriously? Okay. I mean, why not have it in the library? Let people choose it if they want to. I mean, again, why are, why are we doing this? It's crazy. The 10th book on the list is Two Boys Kissing by David Levithan. He's another well-known writer, and the reasons stated for this book are homosexually and other. And in parentheses, it says, condones public displays of affection. Seriously, right now, public displays of affection? Oh, wow, that's horrible. This this was 2015 when this this list came out of challenged books. Seriously, are we for real still talking about homosexuality being offensive and should be challenged in a book? Oh, that's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. Seriously, I mean, this look this list is outrageous. I and let's see the habit by Craig Thompson was number eight reason nudity sexually explicit and unsuited for age group who says who says it's unsuited it doesn't matter everyone has their opinion everyone has their choice to read it or not to read it and that choice should not be taken away by others and that is exactly what the ALA is you know focusing on I mean it's celebrating the freedom to read Highlighting the value of free and open access to information. And you know what? Some people say no one bans books anymore. So what's the point? The point is it still happens. It's more low key, but it still happens. How does it happen? Quite simply, people ask for books to be removed from libraries and classrooms and local officials give in because they don't want any controversy or they don't like the book or they agree with the statement or any other reason why they agree with the people complaining. I mean, I really feel we should decide for ourselves. If you don't want your child reading, you know, looking for Alaska, guess what? Tell your child, I better not catch you reading, looking for Alaska and be done with it. Why do you have the right to tell someone else what they can and can't read, what they can and can't have access to? And I know people have done this. I know they do. Someone complains, an official gives in, and before you know it, that book is yanked off the shelves. You know, some people think that if the book is available, it isn't censored. That's a lie. If it's censored somewhere, it's censored. It doesn't have to be censored everywhere to be considered censored somewhere. Somewhere, anywhere. That means it's censored. And that's wrong. I really think that a lot of people underestimate children. Some are more susceptible to suggestion than others, but as are adults. But my gosh, why do you think that the parent has a role? You teach your child what is appropriate and what is not. Just because they read it in a book doesn't mean they're going to do it. Just because someone says jump off a cliff doesn't mean they're going to do it. For the, uh, Seriously, you teach your child and you, who cares what the book says? They're not just going to run off and do whatever is in the book. It's, you know, seriously, we have to use some common sense here and you need to give your kids more credit. And if you don't give your kids more credit, maybe you should consider what you're teaching them or whether what you're not teaching them. It's time for the blog rundown. Find out what's new on shelfaddiction.com. All right, guys, I'm going to take a break from that rant and we're going to talk about what's going on on shelfaddiction.com. I am looking for recommendations in this month's genre, which is horror or Halloween themed. Send me a 60 second clip, including your name and state or country. Include your book recommendation along with the author name and a one liner on why you recommend the book. And your feedback could be featured here within that episode. So go to shelfaddiction.com, click on the send voicemail button and go ahead and leave me a message. If you want to say something else on that voicemail, if you want to give me some feedback on something else, please do. I am 
happy to receive it. Also on another note, I am posting weekly pop culture Sunday posts. So if you enjoy pop culture, if you want to read some stories that I highlight or get some random bits of pop culture that may not have been talked about in the podcast, you'll want to go to shelfedition.com and subscribe via email or blog loving or any other way that you follow blogs. Last but not least, I don't want to put any dates on it just yet, but I have more author interviews coming to the podcast. Yes, I have several very cool authors lined up. So in the upcoming weeks and um, going into November and through November, you'll want to be subscribed here because I know you don't want to miss any of the very cool author interviews that I have planned. Back to the subject at hand, if you go to ALA.org, you will find that they have several free webinars going on this week. Yes, a few of them have passed already, but they have one on Thursday, the 29th. It's free, but registration is required. You might want to check that out. And I know that they have um, daily blog posts going on from various authors whose books have been either banned or challenged. You can also find out more about the challenged books that I talked about a little bit earlier and the remainder of the list on the 2016 State of America's Library Report. That is a video and I will have the link for you below. So feel free to check that out at your leisure as well. That's really all I have to say on this topic. So I'm not going to go on and on. I have a lot of material for you guys to read below. I fully support Banned Books Week. And you you know, I think we should all take a stand against banned books and challenged books by reading those books. So read a, read a banned book today, read a challenged book today, and tweet about it. And use the hashtag banned books week. So do it. That's all I got to say on that. Read a banned book today. Support your freedom to read, your freedom of free information. And yeah, just do it. Thanks for listening to the podcast today, and I'll see you next week. But before you go, please hit that follow button on Spreaker, the only place where you can listen live, or subscribe and listen later on iTunes, Google Play Music, YouTube, and the Stitcher app. I will see you next week, and until then, happy reading. Bye, guys.